Welcome to episode 17 of Outer Rim Radio, the podcast made by Star Wars Nerd for Star Wars Nerds. I'm your host, Charlie Savage, here today with Ethan Odenthal. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and Charlie, to, you butchered the intro. I'm oh, I know, I know. I just keep it rolling. I keep it rolling. So but today we're discussing uh, Star Wars The Bad Batch episode... What number episode was it? 17. No, this is episode 17, but it was like episode 14 of the oh show. Oh my gosh. Uh. <laughs> but we're talking about War Mantle. And, yeah, uh, we're talking about War Mantle. Yeah. And before we get into that, let's talk about some recent Star Wars news, which, you know, over the course of a week was pretty light. But we got some. We got some gems for you. Yeah, we were spoiled last week. We had three weeks, weeks worth of news to talk about. Yeah. Even so, though most of it happened in like a week. <laughs> pretty... Pretty light news this week. Um, some of it's interesting. According to Giancarlo Esposito, who is the star, one of the stars, one of the uh, the villain, well, the villain uh, in The Mandalorian, announced that Mandalorian Season 3 is heading into production soon um, and that the filming of The Book of Boba Fett is now complete, which is pretty exciting um, just to kind of know that things are going on in the background there. Um, obviously, I want... Mandalorian season three as soon as possible. Hopefully right. the book of Boba Fett scratches that itch. I'm very I'm very hopeful excited to see what that what they'll do with that, but I don't want it to be Mandalorian light or Mandalorian Yeah. I don't want it to just be like a gap season, you know what I mean? I think it will be I think it will definitely be fulfilling enough. Um I I don't think we're going to get a lot of the same themes. I think we're just going to get... Because even like with the way Boba Fett's been portrayed in like recent comics, those comics right now, especially like War of the Bounty Hunters, are definitely like... Oh, snap! I know, at DMCA, I'm worried. I don't know, it's good. I don't want to end up on a podcast because of the sub note. I forgot about that. Let's go. It'll be fine. <laughs> scared the shit out of me. <laughs> anyways, I'm not, I'm anyways. Not yeah. <laughs> anyways, uh, I just think it's definitely going to be more action based. Why am I blanking on who's directing it? On um, who's directing the book of Boba Fett? Yeah. One of. He did the Boba Fett episode that you know, the making of the. I am blanking. We did this before. I swear to God, I'm having deja vu from like three episodes ago. Deja but, anyways. Vu. But yeah, uh, I think it will definitely be very different than The Mandalorian, but it will have like the same sort of vibe. I'm very interested to see where they go. I think the most exciting thing is that we really just don't know what's going to happen in the show. Mm -hmm. and, By the way, it's Robert Rodriguez. Yeah. So he's pretty good at action yeah. shots and stuff like that. So that's what I, I knew the last name is Rodriguez, but I was like, I was like, came up with like five other Rodriguez's in my head. And I'm like, I am not picking one of these. Yeah, I mean, it's the same guy who did, like, El Mariachi and Spy Kids. And Machete, yeah. And Machete, like... So, I mean, that'd be pretty cool. What uh, if it was actually just Spy Kids? It's just <laughs> Spy Kids. It's both. People. Yeah. Um, or maybe it's God is afraid of what he himself has created. <laughs> oh, God, that's such a great line. <laughs> I don't know. What you where's, our, where's our Spy Kids podcast, Charlie? <laughs> you right fuck star wars fuck star wars jesus uh speaking of fuck star wars and fuck star wars fans um so i don't know if you all have heard about this for, for quite a while it's been something that has been in the talks for i want to say five i don't know probably about eight years i've, I've heard about this they're gonna build a disney world a hotel in disney world based on star wars and the image for this changed a lot and they finally built a hotel um and now they're they have this addition and it's called the galactic star cruiser which is essentially like a spaceship a crew a space cruise ship um right and it's pricey it it's is so stupidly it's high priced for, disney is labeling it as not like it's not even like you're staying in a hotel room like it's a whole star wars story it's the most immersive Star Wars story ever created for a make a fucking video game, goddammit. $6,000 for two nights. 
three thousand dollars a night. I don't know. You could go to Vegas with that amount of money. Yeah. Um. I'm not so gonna tell you what you can do in Vegas that, and spend that kind of money, but I'm like thinking. I'm like, yeah, that's that's definitely more than I was making in a month when I was working at <laughs> full time. Yeah, like when you're when you're down and dirty in those entry level jobs, you're not gonna make that much money. Like, no, but that's like a lot for like a whole month. That's most people's vacations, and that's just that's more than most people's vacations. I just think it's a little bit ridiculous, and everyone's been kind of laughing at it because even like the CNN hot headline is, uh, it was like an out of this world experience with an out of this world, world price. price. Uh, yeah, I was like, that's fucking hilarious. Shout out to whoever wrote that article. <laughs> yeah, that whoever wrote that headline is a legend. That's the sass I need. Right. All right, and then next on our list we have, uh, Lego Star Wars: Terrifying Tales to haunt Disney Plus. This October, I feel like I just read that off out of a Nintendo Direct. It, yeah, it was a pretty kid. I mean, it's Lego, so it's gonna be a pretty yeah. kid line. I'm but still I gonna I watch it. it. Really, I found it really funny that we're getting all the strangest Star Wars content this year, including a Lego Star Wars Halloween special. We got a Christmas special last year. Yeah, we did get a Christmas special. But here's the thing. Life the Christmas even. special did terrible in terms of ratings. And I love that movie. A, we're also working on a Lego Star Wars video game that's just been delayed for months yeah. and months and months. So the I loved looking on Twitter and just seeing the backlash of people who are like 40-year-old men tweeting at this tweet that was definitely oriented towards like kids and families. And they're like, where's my Lego Star Wars video game? release it now <laughs> yeah they're like this is not the same people that make these things it's just so fucking funny <laughs> that, the, that this is this is the path the avenue they've chosen can we it's just some poor pr guy who's like i gotta fucking tweet about this so, yeah basically and that's what i want to do for a living no yeah, um get, get wrecked by neck beards on twitter yeah <sighs> yeah basically for money i'll do it you know, for free. Hmm. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, that, <laughs> what I love about the Star Wars Christmas special, the Lego Star Wars Christmas special, a life day one is when all the Obi-Wans meet each other and they keep saying hello there. It's, it's the awesome. best. Or just Darth Maul cut in half trying to fight with other Darth Maul. Jesus, dark. It's so good. That's dark as fuck. All right. Well, Charlie, are we ready to get into oh, episode? My one more thing. War Man. Oh, what is it? It's an. Apparently, Tamagotchi still exists, and there's an R two D two one now. Do you know how many Tamagotchis are in a landfill, just slowly starving to death? I know, and that's why we need to buy more. <laughs> yes, and need more to be in landfills. Yes. Oh shit, Tom, Then we'll grow potatoes on them or something. I don't know. All right, let's let's get into the main discussion for the episode. Yeah. The real well, first, meat and potatoes of the episode. First of all, how did you feel about today's episode? Did you enjoy it? How did... I loved it. I I'm it. scared and I'm happy and I'm it it's it's fun. all the right feelings. It had it had a lot of things that other episodes did not, and that's the thing I I really want to give. Sorry, moving my mic. I really want to give credit to um, Disney on this one. Is they seem to just kind of gauge the responses of the fans in each episode. Um, obviously, at this point in the production, they can't go back right that far. Um, but I don't know. I just felt like as we've been going through here, they've been. F- fixing you know just things seem to have a lot more emotional tension than they did at the beginning of the season correct um there's a lot more emotional tension there's a lot of actual stakes that weren't really present before yeah a lot of it was just run from this person and then you're done it was okay once we escape this bounty hunter once we get the drugs out of a hole uh you know once we can't leave those those drugs in holes everyone knows 
That's how there kids was also find them. another big hole in the ground in this episode, but I'm not going to get into that. I don't know what Disney is with fucking giant holes in the ground. We we love big holes. We love big holes. As Disney, as all men should. As God Disney. intended, the Lord intended. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but I just think they they took the time in this one to really consider how everyone would be feeling. So the biggest thing for me was the emotional tension between Echo and Hunter. Yes. These two characters who Hunter is so pragmatic and so is Echo. Usually Hunter is so pragmatic. He's the commanding officer. He's, we get the orders, we get things done, get in, we get out, do as little as possible to put us in harm's way. And to see Echo kind of stick himself out there and be like, no, 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 we're going to go save this guy not because we have to, but because it's the right thing to do. One propels it into a more moral part of the story. Right. But also you can kind of see Echo, and he literally talks about this later in the show, that you know he has not fully recovered from this emotional trauma, and he feels like he owes it to the world to give that back. Yeah. You know, he was saved. He was just... The, the person who he thought never would be saved again, but he was. Right. And he's wondering, like, what horrifying things are happening to this guy who's really just in the jail cell. But yeah. he went through such terrible things that he wondered. He, he, he can't help but think. For everybody else's sake. Yeah. Exactly. And that's something I kind of wish we've gotten more. I mean, I get that they don't want to overdo it every week with, you know, hey, everybody, let's relive his trauma. But um, we haven't really seen as much of that as we probably could have. Um, or should have, to be honest. Yeah, it's like not since like the first couple of episodes, like when they're on Camino and like the thing scanning him, and he like has that freak out, and it's filmed the way it is, or I guess animated the way it is, so that it it's like a PTSD thing. But yeah, yeah, I just I think there was a lot of context they've been leaving out in this show, whereas I think Disney's biggest fault with this show has been just picking things off from the end of Clone Wars. There hasn't been a lot of recap, a lot of this is what happened. For a fresh viewer, you know, I watch this with my fiance, um, and she'll ask, is like, well, who the fuck's this? Why why yeah. am I supposed to fucking know who this person is? And it's actually really good for Charlie and I's perspective to see that because you do realize, wow, you know, yeah. sometimes they're not they're not understanding that you just need to leave things that you need to leave subplot lines out to introduce some emotional tension. Yeah. You know, we got 25 minutes of episode. Sure. But we have a whole season. You have to consider the character in that. And I really love today that we saw echo and Hunter. They're, they're real colors. And we saw Omega in the most emotionally tense situation ever where they're usually the Omega is usually the moral compass. Yep. That's the point they serve is there is this bit of innocence, but it is always true. And it always, you know, kind of guides them in a way that they kind of listen to Omega and end, but this time even Omega couldn't do anything because it was either sacrifice themselves or let Hunter down there. And they don't know what situation Hunter's in. They had no idea that Hunter was surrounded. He didn't mention anything. Right. He just said, leave me behind. He could have said, leave me behind. I'm going to run off the woods and try to survive. Right. He just, he wanted to make sure that his people were out of there because he didn't want to put them in harm's way. Yeah. And um, we can get into that a little bit more in a second because I want to talk about that. But I, I do want to talk about the interesting things that were in this show um, today. I really enjoyed seeing this first glance, this first look at stormtroopers. Yeah. Um, that are conscripted soldiers, which they're now calling TK troopers at this point, which I wonder what that stand for. I have no idea. Uh, I'm not entirely sure. I'd probably look it up. But... Because I know it, there's like a special um, designation, because... Yeah, per... TK is essentially what like clones would have. Our coaches are constantly fun. 
Oh god, TK damn it. was one of the operating num like uh, number tags for them, but like these are the original, right? So, the problem is, it's like they'll just have like TK L R L R C, like they'll just have numbers. Yeah. That um. Who is this? What's your operating number? Yeah. Yeah, there's always that. That have you ever looked at a sca- scoreboard in the old Battlefront 2? It's just like TK57577. Yeah, it's like just that. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, by the way, I just want to mention I totally called who they were, what clone they were going for. Really? When I was sitting there. Yeah, I was sitting there with my mom watching the episode because we watch it Friday when it comes out. And there, Rex calls and he's like, Hey, go get this clone or whatever. Then they have like, you know, well written part where it's like, oh, where? Oh, we need to do the right thing. And they go get him. And I was like, it's going to be fucking Gregor, isn't it? It's going to be fucking Gregor. Yeah, it was a little bit weird that they chose the goofiest motherfucker in all of Star Wars. Also, um, I loved that um, they acknowledged the explosion from Clone Wars. Yeah. <laughs> he has he has um amnesia. Yeah, he was like, I was in an explosion once. <laughs> You're like, okay, chill. He's so yeah, goofy. it was so funny. My fiance is sitting there while we're watching this. She's like, why does he sound so fucking goofy? I'm like, who oh, <laughs> he is, man? Literal brain damage. <laughs> yeah, that's what happens. I, I actually... was very surprised they didn't do more with him that episode. Um, he was just kind of a plot device in many ways. He just kind of showed up on the screen. Yeah. Like, all right, save me. Let's go here. I would have liked a little bit more action. The thing about an episode like this, and this is kind of what Charlie's getting at. Um, it is a setup episode. Yep. It very much is. They're setting up for the a last good setup episodes. at that. And it was a good setup. But- We're going to find out more why, why Gregor, you know, next two episodes for sure. Yeah. We'll figure out a little bit more about him. He's going to be an addition. I mean, there's questions meant to be asked. What's what's going to happen to Hunter? Right, what are they going to do him as a prisoner of war? Are they going to implant a chip? Are they just going to kill him? Are they going to no. hold him captive while they search for the other I, ones? Are they going to torture him? Yeah, or is Hunter going to be able to like try to get through to certain clones or something? Yeah. I mean, we won't really know until we see it. Think about and it. It big- doesn't make sense. Um, but the thing that's most interesting to me is this backdrop of the Empire. You know, they're preparing for something. Now, I'm almost certain it's they're going to storm Ord Mantell, right? Uh, probably. Because they're mobilizing. And yeah. we know Ord Mantell gets taken at some point. And in yeah. the pre- a previous episode, they had said that, you know, Ord Mantell was where these where they were hiding out. Yeah. But, I mean, the Bad Batch, other than... Uh, I, don't, like, I don't really know what the stakes are for them there. But I also feel like... Uh, crime I've, syndicates. Yeah. Like, it's more impactful for everyone else, but... I mean, they're, they've got their debts to Sid paid off. They're on the yeah, ship. Yeah, they have no reason to go She's back. She's not That's really... Kind of the... I mean, it doesn't seem like she'd really be able to get her place back after what happened anyways. No. No, I, I think they just set it up so like you can just be like, eh, Sid, gone. Yeah. Which I was like, eh, Sid, gone I... from like epi- yeah. the first fucking episode we got with Sid, but... You love Sid. Um... <laughs> you love Sid, I don't... He said, not fucking me, dude. I want to uh, fucking hear. Oh, my gosh. I'm already forgetting her name. And cheers. Yeah. Yeah. Carla. Cool it, goggles. Yeah. yeah. If I want to hear Carla, I go fucking cheers. Yeah. But, uh, um, so I guess I don't think they're going to stay on that planet. I think it's going to. I think that. They're going to transfer Hunter back to Kamino. Yeah, I can see that. They're going to bring him there. And it's going to... Well, because they kind of foreshadowed with uh, Hunter promising that Omega would never have to go back there. 
Yeah, that's uh, that's a that's a truth thing. She, I mean, it's going to be by her choice. Yeah. But um, kind of connected to that. What do you think happened with Lama Sue? Uh, I thought they killed her. Isn't Lama Su the politician? Yes. I just forget what. Yeah. Yeah, they killed the politician. Well, we don't know that they were canonically killed. True. We only know that two people went in there. There was no shots heard. There was nothing like that. Yeah. So I was just wondering. I just thought it was weird that the door shut if they didn't like. I did too, but the. F- I, I just thought that one alluded one to killing. The- one of the tenets of like cinema and storytelling is if you don't see them die on screen, they're usually, usually not, not dead. dead. Right. Um, so, and that doesn't, you know, there's always exceptions to the rule. And yeah. That's not, but that's like, just, it's yeah. a coincidence. So I'm wondering because they took, uh, you know, they took the medical scientist away with Rampart. He takes him away, but he has two of his elite squad troopers basically detain Lama Sue. So I'm wondering if they imprison him and then imprison Hunter, if there will be a conversation there. Right. Between those two, because that would be interesting. We never really see... That would actually be super interesting. ...them interacting. And if because they he, create a... He, Go ahead. He, uh, Lama Su, out of all of the Kaminoans, does truly view the clones as means to an end. As yes. As political power, as money, as... You know, he literally says in this episode, oh, we've got, you know, we could always offer our services to someone else. Right. Whereas the medical officer seems a little bit hesitant. Uh, I mean, she offers that idea. But once he kind of mentions, hey, like, they're probably going to get rid of us. She's she's been hesitant to try to escape. Right. So it's just it's going to be very interesting to see if they do anything with him. Um, I'm perfectly fine if they kill him because that makes sense. Uh, the only character I think would be interesting to interact with him, I should say characters, are either Hunter or Omega. Yeah. But I think Omega needs to... Her story is more involved with that medical officer. Yeah. Who, in many ways, raised her. Exactly. So it would be interesting to see that. But they did... Rampart did take the the Kaminoan... Um, medicine op- medical officer with him so it's interesting to see how that'll get tied into the empire right i would also like if they got if him and hunter got stuck together like in prison i think that'd definitely be super interesting if they have to work together to find a way out and have to like, I mean, people definitely have been talking about a cloner uprising on camino and like that idea that these characters are put together and have lots of knowledge about Camino and probably more than the new people in the empire do. It's very yeah. interesting, but the only thing is, is like the clones are off planet or are getting off planet. So I don't know what that looks like. And it's like, is that just going to be used for stormtroopers, or is that being abandoned entirely? I mean, they took their prime minister and they took, like their head scientist, basically. So, yeah, it wasn't the heavily populated area. Like the Cameron Owens did a lot with nothing, right? So I don't know. Well, I guess we'll have to see. Do you have any um, guesses for our next episode, episode fifteen? Um. So I think episode fifteen is gonna be. Um. I think that's gonna be a lot more getting a group together, planning. Um. I think there will be some immediate action. In general, of like, hey, we have to go find Rex. Like, here, we're... and there's going to be some conflict on the way, and they're going to have to set up a plan. And I think episode sixteen is definitely going to be like the rescue, or the attempted rescue. Yeah, because you got to think we've got, is it? And in... we get sixteen or eighteen now. Is it? I thought it was sixteen. I thought we only have the two left. And I don't know. I feel like someone's going to die. Yeah, 16 episodes. Who would you... I, this is going to sound messed up, but who would you think would die if someone does? Uh, I think it would be Tech. I think they'll have to kill Crosshair. I think that will be the issue. 
Mm. Oh, okay. You're, yeah, and that's kind of what we talked about before, is it's going to be... Like, I don't know if they're going to really be able to help him, and and I wouldn't be surprised if it takes someone else, like, if it takes Wrecker to take out him, you know? Oh, man, that'd be sad as shit. I don't want that. I don't want that either, but that's where my mind's at, man. I don't know. We'll see. I I got these feelings. Them having to kill Crosshair, that would be the culmination. It seems that um, Rampart left. He left Kaminoa. So if there he's taken back there. Um then that leaves yeah. a lot to be seen. Alternatively, I guess like where does the show go after this season is the other part, right? That's that's what I've been wrapping my head around is where what are they gonna set up? Yeah. I mean the only things questions we have is we really have is who is who is Omega? We thought for a while that the question would get answered, but no, we've been left with Boba Fett's sister. Not even mentioned. Oh, thanks, Jeremy. Oh, thanks, buddy. So, yeah. It'll be interesting to see what they want to do with this character, and I would love them to flesh that out, but there's not a lot of plot stakes that would allow them to do that that I can yeah. see right now. Obviously, you've got the backdrop of the entire Empire and all that stuff, and they could be bounty hunters, but... Really, there's nothing with emotional stakes if they kill Crosshair. Yeah, I think it's there's just going to be more tying them to the Empire, right? Like, I'm just very interested to see where the show goes. I also don't really think that them having to kill Crosshair. While I think it's a really interesting idea, I don't know if that really necessarily jives with like the themes we've seen in the show so far, because a lot of them is having to figure out the right way to go about things. And there's definitely been a moral compass. Uh, well, I mean, that's just the whole point of Omega as a character, right? Yeah. She's, it's how she presents herself. That's how she guides the group. And um, the character who's often agreeing with her is Echo. Yeah. Uh, so I'll be interested to see what happens. But you know, just based off of how these two characters have clashed, Hunter and Crosshair, I can see that showdown. But yeah. My main reason for kind of understand not understanding, but kind of leaning towards what you said about death being a probability is that we only have two episodes left. Right. And that is, uh, yeah, like, and I wouldn't be necessarily entirely surprised if, uh, it kind of turns into the Captain Rex show if something happens. Like, I still think that's a probability. I think it'd be really weird for the show to be one and done, though. That's the other thing. Yeah, so here's my mindset on the show right now. It's kind of been all over the place. The main central theme of this show has been you have this crew of super soldiers, and they find this girl who is more like them than any of the clones they've spent their entire life around. And when their entire life gets thrown away because of Order 66 and they choose to flee and run, they get separated. And everything in between has just been kind of arcing back to everything, everyone getting brought together again. Because the midpoint of the show was when they had to fight Crosshair um, Oh crap! It was the place on Braca. On Braca, they had the giant scrapyard ships, and it left Crosshair injured. Yep. If I'm thinking about the arc of the show, you know, you've got it should be getting Crosshair back. They're either going to get Crosshair back, or Crosshair is going to die. Yep. And if Crosshair dies, it's it might be sacrificial. Um, because for me, he was he is a cold character, very cold hearted. But he was never emotionless. Right. When we, we had three episodes and they introduced more complexity with that character than we have now. Right. And I don't think that's at the fault of the writing of the show. I actually think it's for the better because we don't know. Just, he's just a blunt force trauma. Yeah. When he shows up, things are going to get difficult. People are going to die. And he will not to like do it at later levels of it. But, like, he'll do anything. Like, he was literally, like, get a giant engine on a ship operational to murder these people. 
Like, yeah. And it ended up injuring him. Yep. You know, his, his, his bloodlust has driven him to all this. So I would love also to some see... very intentional use of the term backfire. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, seriously. Um, I would love to see some redemption, but it becomes difficult when you have two episodes left. Yeah. I think the way I see it is a point of conflict in which he doesn't have to. He doesn't have it in him to kill them. Like, I think that's the more thing that will like, like we, the more likely thing that we'll see. Like, I don't think. Yeah. But then the question is, is where does that lead the show from here? Right. I think I wouldn't be entirely surprised if we get something that mirrors like the moments before Rex and Ahsoka happened in in Order 66 at the end of Clone Wars to where you can just see that he's, it doesn't make sense to him and they're just trying to stop him. And I also think that we may see more than just the Bad Batch, so I think that will really help if there's other clones because that's totally what Rex is working on, especially since we introduced the, um, what's that other clone's name? Why am oh, I that's, blinking? That's true. I mean, they did just see the like, Rex is in danger thing, which is either a convenient plot tool or could be a very interesting thing to see how they branch that path going from Rex starts this journey and he's on it to the end of Rex journey when they have all those old clones with him. Yeah. Um, Like I think somewhere in there, the bad batch would have to either disappear or die. Yeah. And I think, I think it would make sense. I like the, diversity of like that group if because i i don't think there's a way in which uh you know where rex doesn't go to that planet where all those clones get arrested got arrested and i don't think there's there's no way that he doesn't try to help him i think we're gonna see um what the deal with gregor is i think wolf will be back so i think seeing a lot of like these captains and like someone like gregor who's like you know, a commando, which is a very elite clone. Um, yeah. You know, basically be like, this is wrong. And like, I think that might just like kind of break the state of reality that Crosshair has to live in with the chip. Because it's like, are you really going to fight clones when you're the only clone that stands for something that's left? You're the only one that's not standing with the clones in that situation if it's still stormtroopers. Yeah, those conscripted soldiers. Like, what's it going to take for them to just dispose of him when he becomes too much of a threat, when they can't fully control him? Exactly. And that's what the Empire talked about at the beginning. Rampart was like, Rampart and Tarkin were like, do we kill this guy? Yep. They and were They were kind of persuaded not to. Yeah. By the Kaminoans, right? Who, I can't remember that. Yeah, literally the Kaminoans were like, we can make the chip stronger. Yo, that's right. So, I definitely think... Like, I just don't think there's any way that you don't get, like, the whole squad up thing, which is kind of, like, there's been a little, few too many little parallels between, like, this and Mandalorian Season 2. But I'm also entirely down for it, that, because I do think a lot of the theme here is, like, it's a very found family. It's very, we have to come together. We have to, like, Connor's put himself on the line so many times, like, you have to get him out. But what are the things about Star Wars? is it's always been a found family style story and and adventure stories lend themselves to that yes if you just look at the archetypical characters that you get in adventure style stories specifically in sci-fi or strangely enough pirate adventure stories you're (laughs) gonna have this this found family you're gonna have the renegade character the the cowboy who is, in this case, yeah, Mando and the Mandalorian. Yep. Han Solo. And something takes them from being the loner to guiding their principles. And there's something so satisfying about that. And the Bad Batch is culminated in that. You have these these characters who just want to live, who just want to go for another day. And Omega becomes the thing that they center their lives around. And then Rex. Yep. Or... Now they have a bounty. So just giving them something that these guys have to stay onto is so yeah. interesting. Also, and I guess def- 
Oh, no, keep going. I was literally just going to say from chat, um, you know, skate punk. Mandalorian is one of the best things to happen to Star Wars. It, it, it tremendously raised the, not the engagement, but just people became more interested in Star Wars again. Yeah, and, and it was like, it wasn't just the movies. Like, people are always going to be interested in a Star Wars movie when it drops, but it got people to actually, it got a lot of people to dive in more into other Star- aspects of Star Wars, into Clone Wars, into comics, into books. Even if you're not interested in the Clone Wars, being able to take a Star Wars and use it as a backdrop to a much more interesting story which is the thing that I think is the most interesting about Mandalorian. It's yeah. the plot. You can take the plot of the Mandalorian, completely remove it from Star Wars, and plug it in any sci-fi, fantasy, oh, totally. modern universe, and it's going to be fascinating. It's yeah. just a very compelling story. And there's the reason we draw similarities to the Mandalorian so much, and I hear people say, when they're talking about the Bad Batch, Clone Wars, that reminds me of the Mandalorian. Stuff that was out before the Mandalorian was even out is because the Mandalorian was so compelling. Right. And the thing about the Bad Batch here, and kind of going full circle, and since I was talking about the t- characters before, the thing that I liked the most about this episode, and I found the most important, is that we've finally taken our characters, we've taken our, t- t- uh, we've taken our titular bunch, you know, the Bad Batch themselves, and Hunter, the leader of that group, has seemed to fully come into his own as a character. We've got the full view of who he is, showing that he has stakes that he has to live up to, but he has genuine flaws. He's overprotective. Yep. But he's self-sacrificial. And, right. You know, it's kind of in the opposite vein of what we saw in Mando. Until he had the kid, he just had this callousness. He didn't really care about anything. Yeah. But once he had him, he would do whatever to protect him. But he wasn't going to sacrifice himself at first until the end. Yep. Hunter has always been like this. Now it's going to bite him in the ass because he's been captured and he's going to have to face some tough choices. Exactly. I think you stated that very well. (laughs) <laughs> I love what Jeremy said. Best thing that happened to Star Wars universe is Jedi Fallen Order. <laughs> I'm still mad I haven't played Jedi Fallen Order. You own I it. Own play it. it. Bro, I travel for work. I know. If, I, if it was on the Switch, I would have had it beaten by now. <laughs> I'm just, yeah, we're just going to need to snag you a PS5 to throw in a separate box. Bro, I wish. <laughs> I know. I have to play it. It looks so good. Jeremy even yeah. says so. I know, I know Jeremy's not even a Star Wars fan, too. That's the thing. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I definitely need to play it. I have some oh, Game Pass. Yeah, I, I just spent straight cash on it. I knew I'd love it. Yeah. Um, Side note. I have some time off here soon, so I'm going to play the this. The Deluxe Edition is $5 right now on PSN if anyone is listening and doesn't have it. Yeah, please play that game. Yeah. I haven't even played we it. We still need to do an episode on it. I'm, I want to do we that will. soon. Which Jeremy should definitely uh, chime in for. Please, that'd be lit. But yeah, uh, no. yeah, it's five bucks. It, or like maybe five dollars and fifty cents. It's super cheap. I was looking at the sale today. Anyways, um, also really random question. Do you think there's any chance that um we see either of our two bounty hunters come back in the last two episodes? In the last two episodes. There's always that chance, right? But when I see two episodes and I see, like, I'm looking at the story. There's so much plot-wise that needs to be accomplished in two episodes. Rescuing Hunter. And if we're ending the season, they need closure with Crosshair. Yes. Each of those, Crosshair's closure is two episodes worth of him being on the screen start to end. Hunter is an episode, and they're going to have to likely break him out of somewhere that's yeah. not easy, like Caminella. Yeah. I think it's mm-hmm. unlikely that we see them again, but if there was a season two, 
I think it's almost guaranteed that they were right. they would be popping up maybe on the side of the the bad batch. It just kind of depends on where we go from here. But I mean, ultimately answering your question for our purposes in the next few weeks, I would say no. All right. I was just wondering because I could totally see uh, they meet up with Rex and the group is apprehensive because Fennec Shan's with them for some reason. Now, I could definitely see that, that they, they hire these two or they hire at least Fennec Shan. Yeah, and I feel like there. I feel like the clones have a little all around have a little too much bad experience with uh, Cad Bane. And I don't think her and Cad would work too well together. Although that'd be badass. Yeah. But fucking Cad Bane is the cowboy of Star Wars. He I mean, is. Seriously, there needs to be... I don't know. The fact that he was never even referenced in Ma The Mandalorian, which is the most Western of space Westerns, was so ah. upsetting to me because... He is, like, he just, so comically cowboy. I love... Ed Bane. He's, he's he he's literally the has like a cool cowboy villain. Yeah, he's the outlaw. He's he's the bloodthirsty bounty hunter. He is go watch a Western. Go read a Western. Cad Bane is 90 percent of the the villains. Like. <laughs> yeah, literally big cowboy hat, something in his teeth, duel with pistols. And in Star Wars, they're like, yes, and we're just going to give him random, uh, you know, items to use. Oh, he's going to grab someone's legs and he's just going to shock them to death. Why? Because he's Cad Bane. Yeah, that was pretty brutal, by the way. Basically yeah. lassoed and electrocute them to death. Yeah, he's he's crazy. The man. We get a Cad Bane game. That'd be fun. I'm for more Star Wars games, more yeah. Star Wars shows, more Star Wars games. I want more Star Wars everything. I'm trying to think if we have anything else to talk about this episode. It was um, we got eventful. to see we got a uh commando squadron cameo, so that was neat. Yeah, that's what I was like. I was like, oh, that's so cool. My fiance's like, you're a fucking nerd. I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> right, and I'm like, it's fine. It's fine. I'm fine. My feelings aren't hurt. Yeah, I was like, fucking Republic Commando references. I think it'd be interesting yeah. to see if we learn more about them in canon too the, the commandos yeah yeah i totally agree now i want to play that game holy shit that's also on sale on playstation right now too what yeah it's on switch you can buy it on switch if you want since you i thought traveled. you said on twitch like how the fuck do i play a game on twitch oh shit no i meant playstation i might have said twitch anyways Oh, I might have played that. I forgot they remastered it. I haven't we played totally it in a, it. a long time, and I didn't beat it when I first played it. I have it literally uh, downloaded on my PC, so I will, I'm probably going to play it in the next couple of weeks here. I think yeah. it'd be fun to talk about just Star Wars games. Yeah, so to answer Chad's question, um, I have. I'm down for that, before. gamer. <laughs> the street's been I've, asking. I've been playing it for a while. Um, on and off. Well, when I was a kid, I played it several times. Um, it is one of the best games I've played. What if we did a stream where we just played Star Wars games for 24 hours? Uh, we would just play 20 hours of Star Wars Battlefront. This is, I mean, you're not wrong, but. But like, I have yes to Star Wars Battlefront. I don't need this fucking lame shit. <laughs> I'm going to play it on my Vita, actually. No. <laughs> on your Vita? Way to fucking date yourself. The, the PSP version on the Vita. Oh, man. Oh, that's even worse. I yeah, had it for the PSP. I'm not you only use one analog stick. That's all you need. True. Hit square, auto-aim. Done. Busted. 50 kills a game. Easy. <laughs> yeah. We need to do an episode on Star Wars games because I just want to talk about Republic Commando, KOTOR... Fallen Order. Um, oh, I had one. Oh, definitely Force Star Wars Bounty Hunter. And Force Unleashed. Unleashed. Which yeah. I hate when they put that game on sale. Sorry, we're on such a tangent here. I hate when they put that game on sale because most PCs can't even run it. Oh, it's yeah. On sale, on sale on Steam. Yeah, it's sitting, it's sitting on my hard drive, so we'll see how that goes for me. I also have uh, Shadows of the Empire and Dark Forces downloaded. Let's go. 
Yeah. All right, Charlie. Any more things we need to touch on? Uh, um, yeah, I think we pretty much touched on most of the episode. Um, I can't really think of too much else that we haven't done. So, if you want to take yeah, us to our outro, yeah, we'll take it to the outro and then we'll just talk with chat for a bit. Yeah. Uh, so chat. Um, we're gonna sign out for like twenty seconds, and then we'll just be back to chill with chat. Yep. So just letting you know now since you're here. It's for editing purposes. Entirely. <laughs> well. <laughs> yep. Thanks everybody for tuning in from all across the galaxy. If you like the episode, please consider subscribing to our podcast and sharing our podcast wherever you get podcasts. Uh, share it with a friend or family member who might enjoy it. Uh, if you want to interact with us or help the show become better, um, consider interacting with us on our Discord or on Twitter. Um, links will be in the show notes wherever you get that. Um, or you can find, if you're watching right now, at ORR Show. Um, that's our Twitter. And yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, Charlie was just showing off our merch. Our yep. lovely, lovely merch. So you can find that in Redbubble, uh, which is also in the show notes. But uh, everybody, thank you so much for tuning in. May the Force be with you.